What do we want to see from Pat? Everybody in the chat, if you have anything specific you want to see uh, from Patrick Williams this year, let us know. Let your fellow Bulls fans in the chat know, whether it's something like statistic or or whatever it is you want anything. to see from Pat. Yeah. Uh, let's start here. Talking about the departure of DeMar and whether or not it was ever a valid excuse for Patrick Williams not being a more aggressive and involved offensive player. Okay. I thought about a lot of different options for what I wanted my Pat prove it to be. I thought about something related to three-point attempt rate and his three-point percentage. He was just shy. I think he, after his cold start, he nearly built himself back up to 40%. I think he was literally like .399 at the end of the year. Okay. But instead, I decided to go with something the GOAT you posed to Patrick two years ago oh. when we were doing these oh, prove it. Seats. Oh. You wanted to see him get his usage percentage up to 18, which he had not done at that point in his career. Still has at not. that point his in his career, he had usage percentages of 14.9 as a rookie and 14.2 in his only 17 games second season. You asked 18 of him in the 22-23 season. He fell shy of that, 15.7. This past season, injury-shortened 43-game season, did go up to 16.6. So we're heading in the right direction with Pat and his usage. Mm -hmm. I know that people are saying, gosh, like there's still so many players here. Giddy needs to come in and get his touches, but yeah. maybe those Giddy touches lead to good looks for Pat. And we got to... You know, accentuate Zach Levine and make the rest of the league believe that he's a good player they want to trade sure, for again. Sure, sure. And obviously, Kobe's going to get his touches and his shots. Is it feasible for Patrick Williams to do much more than that? Be a high teens uses percentage player? DeMar DeRozan is gone. DeMar's shots, DeMar's ISO possessions, DeMar's free throw attempts, gone. I have been someone who has believed this whole time that, of course, there is at least some correlation between DeMar DeRozan being here and Vooch and Zach mm -hmm. and Patrick Williams chilling and just being Patrick Williams sure. and nothing more than what, than what we've seen. Mm -hmm. Flat out zero excuses left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Young squad and you project to be one of the younger vet starters in this lineup out of the gate. 20% mm -hmm. usage percentage, Pat. Woo! You have no reason not to. Woo! 20%. Whoa, I'm only asking a for the, a, a three and a half point jump from last year yeah. in his 43 games. He was at 16 and a half. Credit to him. Give me 20%, Pat. Mm. Prove to me that you actually want to be a game changing offensive NBA player. Prove it to me. Because I don't believe you are, and I don't believe Ooh. that you care right now. Talk that, Matt. See, I like that. Now, that's a goal. He's setting out a challenge out there for that young man. I like this, Matt. I yeah, like this. Again, I, I disagree with that. I think, oh. like, he – I don't think you could say, like, he doesn't want to. I think he's just had a really hard time understanding how to manage that. And I think he's been deferential, for sure. Right. But I don't I don't think that that is the same as he's not interested. And I'm not saying that's what you mean, but I just feel like he has an opportunity now to, like, put his foot down a little bit more. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of – more I'm, the way, I'm, at least if, I would put it. If it was so that he was just being a younger guy who's deferring to vet teammates like Damar and Vooch and Zach, okay, well, yeah, Vooch and Zach are still here, but this is a, this is a youth movement now. Mm -hmm. So go get yours because you are smack dab in the middle of, hey, I was the first selection made by this front office. So I'm one of I am one of the more veteran young guys in a youth movement. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, Goat. Also just got myself a new five-year deal for $90 million. A modest five-year deal, monetarily speaking, compared to some of Pat's contemporaries from the 2020 draft class yeah. who are making buco bucks more than that because they have proven more than Pat has on an NBA floor thus far. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I hear that. I like that. And I'm going to continue with that. Let's go. I had no stats. I'm tired of talking about it. Mm. I'm sick of it. Oh, okay. As you already know. What my prove it is, if you've been watching the show, it's not hard. You know what it is. It's the no excuses to it. Yeah. That's what, we on. <laughs> That's what we on. We are on the no excuses to it. And Matt, you touched on it towards the end of your soliloquy right there. It's it's done. I'm done with it, bro. I, I am. I'm finished with it. I can't. There's nothing else I can really say anymore. It's about action now for me. I got to see it. No more words, no more talking, none of that. I have to see it 
on the floor. And I'm not even talking 20 and 10. Yeah, that was my question. You know what I'm so saying? What is it? I'm not even talking that. I'm talking better than what I've been watching. That's what I'm talking. I'm talking some fulfillment of the potential that we see that you have. Some of that. We saw, we've seen it in the three-point range, and I've seen it defensively. I've seen that potential be touched and expounded upon and grown in those areas right there. But there's more there, and we all talk about it all the time. We, that's why we're like, 10 points ain't enough. You can't go four straight games with like four shots, and everybody's cool with that. Yeah. No, you can't have me three, four rebounds. That's not good enough. You yeah. have more skill than that. That's the frustrating part of it uh, when we're having these discussions about him is we're watching this person and we're seeing how big he is. And we know, like you said, he can fit on all 30 teams because he's a 3 and D dude. He is the prototype. If you put up a, a, a silhouette of an NBA player prototype, it'll be his. You know, just looking at that dude like, yeah, I want that guy on my team. I, again, 20 and 10 is not what I'm talking about right now. He has to get to that. But we have to start seeing this stuff start paying off where we're like, oh, yeah, that's the potential we talked about. I'm watching Io reach his. I'm watching Kobe reach his. I'm watching Daylon go for his. Like, I ain't never seen nobody go for that. Whether he reaches it or not, he's going balls to the wall for it. I want Pat to be the same way. I know Modest is going for it. I need Pat to be that same kind of way. Mm -hmm. That's all we want is him to give us that effort and show us like, yeah, dude, y'all wasn't wrong when y'all thought I was that guy or I got the potential to be that dude. Here goes 15 and 8 right here. Here goes 16 and 7 right here. Here goes one game where I scored 20 plus points. I mean, I know he can do these things. I just need to see him on a more consistent basis. And that's why it's the no excuses tour for me because all that stuff is out the window. Like you said, DeMar is gone. He's a veteran now. I'm going to have to defer to Zach because we don't even know if Zach going to be here right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he don't have to defer to nobody. Like you said, it's a youth movement. So it is on his kind of thing. I think, Will, he might have the ball a little bit more, make a little more decisions and things like that. And, again, like I said, I'm strictly talking offensively. I've seen him defensively reach that kind of potential. I need to see it on the other end of the floor, man. It hasn't been good enough. And injury-wise or whatever you want to say, all of it is out the window. He's healthy. No one's in front of you. You're going to get all the time in the world to do your thing. We have got to see it now, this season. Yeah, I think that's right. And it's. I think it leads into mine well, which is just like the baseline for me, my proof it is the baseline has to be what you put up in December. Okay. Which that was AK's famous, like Patrick was on a tear in the month of December. Like he, he played, he was playing his best <laughs> basketball then. Like, okay. It was between, and it was a little bit. Is this like the, the Lowry market in February? Is that one I know. Year? Way back. February. So from, February. <laughs> from November 22nd to December 30th, which is when the last game before he got hurt, mm -hmm. he was 14 points, four and a half rebounds, 1.7 assists, 0.8 steals, 0.8 blocks uh, on 52, 49, 75 shooting splits. And I think maybe the shooting is a little hot. I think there are times where he like scores because he just made three out of his five threes instead of one or two. Yeah. Um, and that's going to happen. But I think he was more decisive at that time. I think he was looking for his offense a little bit more at mm. that time. Um, and that was when Zach was out. So it was just Damar and Vooch and Kobe. And I think that's kind of the mentality that he needs to have for this year. And so to me, like, that should be the baseline. I don't want to see 10 and four again. Like, you got to do a little bit more than that. And here's the thing. You mentioned, like, Kobe and Io and mm. Dalen going out and getting it. Like, Pat's had those opportunities, too. Yes. And so I think that's that's kind of, like, the disconnect mm -hmm. is, like, the opportunities are there. Why why isn't there a little bit – I, I don't want to say, like, desire because I, I know Patrick, at least from what he's told me, that, like, he really wants it. But yeah. I think, you know, and he's, he's said this, like, in the least critical way possible. But sure. just as a fact of the matter, it's hard to fit in around three guys that need the ball like that. Mm -hmm. It's not the case anymore. Giddy's in, Zach is in, obviously, Vooch is there, Kobe's yeah. there, but there's going to have to be a little bit more looking for your own. And, yeah, I think this is, it's kind of like you're saying, Dave, now or never, this is excuse, no excuses tour, but I think if he can just be the baseline of that's how he was in December and yeah. then build on top of that, that's what I want to see from Patrick yeah. this year. And, and even more so, Will, this Bulls team now has more guys who are looking for other guys uh, on this team. Like Lonzo is going to be looking for the guy. Daylon loves to pass. 
you know, Marcus Buzelis has shown you he don't need the basketball. Like, when yeah. his coach was here, he talked about that. Uh, you, you're a rookie. You're not going to get the ball. You have to play without it. We saw it in the summer league. He didn't need the basketball to do it, but when he got it, he did his thing. So he's and he, and he enjoys his teammates winning. Right. You know what I mean? Around him. So he has and Vooch as well. Vooch is one of the best passing centers in the league, in my opinion. So he has these people around him that have no problem sharing the basketball, have no problem putting him in a position to succeed, and no problem getting a good position to him to win. He's got to step into it this year because I can't hear no more of it after this year, bro. I just can't. Yeah, and you know, I think that that's you know why I was maybe a little harsh in how I wrapped up my my prove it. Because, you know, I'm, I'm with you, Go Like, if he if he starts out by just saying, okay, I can replicate what I did this month of the last year before getting hurt when I maybe was starting to feel comfortable in my role and go from there, I'm fine with that. I think that's a modest and achievable goal. When I was saying the thing about, like, you know, like, prove to us that you want to be an NBA player because sometimes I don't believe you are. Dave, you were talking about it. Like, I don't care mm-hmm. about this, that, or that. I don't care about DeMar's touches, Zach's touches, Vuj touches. I think something that frustrated Bulls fans, even those of us who have wanted to and have most of the time believed in a a potential for a better, more effective and more, you know, game effective Patrick Williams is that sometimes when he's out there in his role, he doesn't even seem to be tuned in Mm. caring about his more modest role Mm. than some of his star teammates who are getting all the touches and all the shots. And that's why that is why. In my opinion, he at various points throughout the first four NBA you know seasons of his career has lost his starting job to a variety of different people. That's true. Tory Craig, Alex Caruso, Javante Green. That's true. No, no disrespect, Javante. Bulls fans, we all love Javante and our five Javante. But come on, man, a fourth overall pick who is saying here we're going in a new direction. You're the starter. Yeah. Starting power forward. That's you, Patrick Williams. Yeah. And how many times do we sit here in a post game show and say? Was Pat even out there tonight? Yeah, we did. Whether you are the 1A star on a team or the 12th guy on the bench, mm-hmm. to me, when I watch a full 48-minute basketball game and say to my buddies here, did Pat play tonight? That's the thing that bugs me about Pat. Yeah. Thrive in your role, even if it's a more modest role, and have the freaking mentality and, and like pride to hope that your role this year is going to be bigger and Get, get around an NBA court and behave on an NBA court like it is. Mm-hmm. I know people make the Kawhi comparison and the fact that, like, you could be a calm, demeanored person. Sure. Okay, cool. Kawhi does that and is an all-NBA player, MVP caliber person, finals MVP. Mm-hmm. You have to be that or else people will quest, question your care factor, mm-hmm. which is what I think happens a lot with Pat. But here's the thing is Patrick, like, there's – it's kind of like the giddy effect where it's like this guy needs the ball in his hands in order to be effective because the things that he does well require you to have the ball in his hands. But And he also hurts you when he doesn't have the ball in his hands because he's not a good shooter. He's not a good defender. So you got to put the ball in his hands because he's he's hurting you if he doesn't. Mm. But that's I feel like that's kind of the same with Patrick, except he is kind of good at the role player stuff. He can shoot it. Sure. He can defend. But there are these things in his game that I think are holding him back from being good enough to warrant having the usage that we're talking about here. And so I want to see that he worked on his speed of his jump shot release. That needs to improve because he can shoot. But if you can't get him off when someone's closing out, like that you're not helping yourself. Sure. Like now you have, you have to attack the basket. And the other thing, which I've been saying for a really long time is his ball handling. He needs yes. to be able to get all the way <sighs> to the rim. Yeah. Um, a lot of times he just stops and pops at the elbow. That's fine. But like, if you, as we talked about with Kobe, as we talked about with Io, it's like, if you want to be an efficient scoring league, you have to get to the foul line. We've been talking about this with Patrick for years. Patrick's been talking about it for years. Like, I need to up my free throws. The DeMar free throw attempt stuff is gone. Like, mm-hmm. somebody has to fill that gap. And Patrick can do it. He's physical. He, he can get contact. But he has to be able to get all the way to the rim. And the way his handle is right now, he's not able to do that. So I really hope he worked on that this summer. I really hope he worked on his the speed of his release because those things... You weave it together, and that helps you as a basketball player. If you have to be close, if you can close out slow to Patrick, it takes away the drive, and mm-hmm. you're less concerned about the shot because he can't get it off quickly. If you have to be really, if you really have to get out there and close out hard on him, that opens up the driving lanes Correct. to where he can get all the way downhill. So mm-hmm. it's just like all these things need to come together, 
And I think that has held him back at times from being the aggressive, explosive role player that he should be. Mm-hmm. But I also don't think that, that that means that it translates well to him having the ball in his hands. Okay. If he struggles with the ball, if he struggles with his ball handling, why would you put the ball in his hands to create offense? So he really needs to work on that either way because I think it will really help him. I think the speed of his release is the same thing. Like He's just got to be able to get the shot off. Mm. He can't shoot off the dribble because he can't load up quick enough and you just you can't separate. So he's got a lot, I think, to work to work on. Mm-hmm. He has tools. He has the work ethic, I think. He has the physical attributes, but he's got to develop his skill game a little bit more. And I, and I just think you kind of need to put the ball in his hands to see if he can do it. But also it's on him, I think, to put that work in over the summer and, and enhance those skills because we've all known – for a long time, like the work, you can see the work that you put in. Sure. So I, I, I hope that's what he's been working on during this recovery process and, and off season. We all silly like the mayor.